low blow, buddy. I'll see what I can do for you for the next debate. Hey, I'm not lying. I was in an interview, and they asked me. I'm telling them the truth. You can go. I didn't say you did. They asked me that. I believe you'll say yes, buddy. Good evening. Hi. Uh, my name is Chris Brady. I'm running for school board here in District 7. For those of you who don't know, District 7 it takes in basically southeast Jefferson County and runs its way up through Middletown and all the way over to uh, parts of, uh, well, just beyond the Poloville. So it's a fairly large area. Jonathan Robertson is my name. And uh, okay. actually, thank you for reminding me about anniversaries. Tomorrow is my wife and mine's uh, our 19th anniversary. Hmm. And um, it's, uh, it's been a great time and because student achievement is our number one goal. And uh, I think the current student assignment plan with 13 clusters probably does a much better job of respecting our neighborhoods, respects diversity, and will continue diversity. Um, and uh, it was a, was a good decision, and I'd be very supportive of that. Um, and thankfully, the 13 cluster assignment plan will be neighborhood focused. It will be able to uh, reduce those ride times, that will eventually eliminate bus depots, and also, as, uh, as was previously mentioned, still meets JCPS go J JCPS's goals for uh, diversity standards, which I think that we have uh, made great strides as a community to have a diverse learning environment. Mr. Robertson. I am for neighborhood schools, and I think that that is a key component to the way we should educate our children. And the reason being is because, like with my wife and I, we have been always involved with our children in their schooling. We have, uh, my wife was at the, uh, she was in the PTA at Tully Elementary with our kids. My wife was there so much they thought she worked there. Mr. Sexton. Having spent uh, 43 years in two neighborhood high schools, uh, I can tell you that uh, it works. Um, Jefferson Town and uh, Eastern are really uh, neighborhood schools. All students that wish to go to those schools uh, were allowed to attend. Because ultimately, who's responsible for our children? We are as parents. The parents are the most important factor as far as I'm concerned. Uh, parent involvement only can happen at a neighborhood level as far as I'm concerned. I do like parental choice. I believe that you should have the, the choice to send a child where you want to send them in the school system uh, for various reasons, whether it be for a magnet program or a traditional program, whatever the case may be. Um, I just feel that, that the neighborhood schools will be um, more conducive to learning for our children because the, the parents can be more involved with what their children are doing. To uh, travel for 40 or 45 minutes on a bus, that the parent should have a guaranteed seat in their neighborhood school or the school nearest to them for their sons and daughters. If they choose to go some other location, so be it. This is an asset serving on the Board of Education. I've never run for any political office, never intended to run for any political office, but since this community has invested so much in me in the education arena, and uh, since I'm now fully retired, as you can see, casual, retired, don't have for a coat and tie, I need to stop, but I figured I would offer myself up to run for the school board and provide some assistance. But they should be guaranteed that seat. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have a talent drain in uh, Jefferson County to the other surrounding counties. They're, they're having a boom town in Shelby and Oldham County. The growth is phenomenal because our schools are not predictable. We don't know where our kids are going to go to school until late August. Um, oh, and also I graduated from J-Town High School under uh, Jim Sexton here. <laughs> and I uh, went to the University of Louisville and I have a degree in finance. My name is James Sexton. Uh, we're real proud of Jonathan. <laughs> he hasn't purchased his brick yet from the town hall. I don't have all the money you have. Uh, <laughs> now, one of the concerns I have from the neighborhood school standpoint is that we are not from a, I don't believe that, we're, that Louisville is totally integrated from a diversity standpoint. And I'm not just talking about skin color. Diversity means much more than just skin color. It means economic attainment. It means educational achievement. 
Uh, by today's diversity standards, as I was growing up as the son of a single mom, and I'm being on free or reduced school lunches when I was growing up, I would be to some degree considered a diversity kid. Going back to neighborhood schools, we can't just flip the switch and tomorrow be neighborhood schools. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I likewise uh, don't support the neighborhood school concept uh, just because it's a, a demographic that we're trying to describe school boundaries and how school boundaries are established and so forth. Um, I think when you, you know, we haven't had neighborhood schools in, in Louisville, Jefferson County since 1975, so if people talk about going back to neighborhood schools, we haven't had neighborhood schools, the, the, the concept that's discussed since 1975. We could transition into neighborhood schools over the next few years and start putting kids back more in their neighborhood. I think I've been through six different state assessment eras. You know, it's always going to be great, of course, if we compare it to other schools across the nation instead of just Kentucky, uh, because we are not always the best in the testing, uh, it seems. So, um, I, I think that I think that if we, like I said, if we just give it time, I think that we will find that it will, it will yield great results. And my main concern as a parent is that we create kids who are critical thinkers. And of course exams are my favorite way of assessing where you are at the end of the course. Um, common Core standards are 15 or 20 years late. Uh, unfortunately, not all the schools are that way. I'm sure the opportunities are there with most, with, with most of the schools. Um, but then there's some, probably some inequities, I would say, in some schools. Uh, for, one, for instance, Eastern has, has a strong parental involvement. Uh, other schools, like when our children went to Tully, uh, Tully had a huge... Common Core, uh, just for the record, former commissioner of Kentucky was the forerunner of putting together the 46 states to agree upon the Common Core. Um, uh, so it's natural that Kentucky would be a leader in, in, in implementing it. So involved with PTA. And PTA, they provided lots of money for the students and for, for books, for supplies, for all sorts of things that they fell short on from the uh, school system. We have, we have some schools that are ranked nationally as the lowest schools in the nation. We have some schools that are ranked nationally as the lowest schools in the nation. Schools that are ranked nationally as the lowest schools in the nation. That's embarrassing. But we have some schools that are ranked in the top 30 in the nation. Now, we either want all the school system to be level and respectable, or we want a few prima donna schools in all levels and 10 failure schools that everybody's saying, I don't want my kid to go there. The neighborhood school concept maybe is what we need to bring back. And maybe we need to cut out the transportation if you go out of your neighborhood. We don't send buses to Brown School, very successful school. We're transporting a lot of kids a long way to go to Magnet and traditional schools. These are things that are not usually sent to folks. You know it's true. For example, we have 10,000 homeless students. So we have one in 10 of our students is that doesn't have a stable environment, and they don't know where they're going to be from, time, from one night to the other. And schools are the only stable environment that they have. Every school should have an active PTA, but it should not be the overall uh, umbrella. There's, if you have a large high school, and I keep going back to high schools, you have probably 20 sports. And a lot of those folks are not interested in PTA. So yes, I would support PTA being involved in every school. Um, I definitely support the fact that the PTA is responsible for the SPDM elections for parents who serve on the uh, SPDM councils. I would vote no, but I, I, I don't support any new tax increases on the community. Uh, I would pledge that I would vote no uh, each year. If you want to get something done, you get PTA parents. If you want to get something done, you get PTA parents. If you want to get something done, you get PTA parents. Uh, that is the major reason that I lost the endorsement of JCTA because they asked me if I would dedicate myself to voting the maximum uh, tax increase each year if I were elected to the school board, and I said no. I know that. Uh, but by the same token, like others have said, you can't necessarily uh, force everybody to be P 
PTA. You can't necessarily do a PTA umbrella over the whole city. Um, but um, I think that if we, um, I think it, one good thing, I think if we went to neighborhood schools, I believe that you would see PTA membership go up. Uh, I've graduated about 15,000 students from District 7. I've handed diplomas to a great number, as, as you might imagine, 15,000 is a lot of, of students. That have, some of them still live in the community, and some of them have left the community, but it's, it's been a great, uh, great ride for Jefferson County Public Schools. Well, one thing I'd like to say is, you know, that story about the having the one book for the kids, just imagine if we stopped busing kids all across the county, we'd probably have some money for some more books. Just saying. I know what's going on. I have worked here. I know where the bones are buried, folks. I know what's going on. I have worked here. I know where the bones are buried, folks. I know what's going on. I have worked here. I know where the bones are buried, folks. Uh, you know, I, I may not always have the, the best answers out of this group, and I may not always have the, uh, the best insights when you ask about core testing and so on. I am a parent of two children. Mr. Brady. I need to take a moment of my time to address the comment that was made earlier. I am endorsed by Better Schools Kentucky, which is JCTA. Their questionnaire does not ask what Mr. Sexton implied. That is completely false. That was personally asked. It wasn't the questionnaire. I'll correct you on that. I was there, you weren't. That's not that's not false. That's not true. I did always never asked that. I was, I was I never in the interview. interview. You I were not with, with me in the interview. I find it really rich that a, 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 the principal that has paid her, their secretary $20,000 a year in overtime for the last few years of him being at a, a principal at Eastern High School, when that means are that you person the entire, mud? I'm, excuse me? Are you going to start throwing mud? That's not a question. I'm sorry, you've already thrown it. That is the I I a fact I was never, that you're endorsed. You're going to get $200,000 worth of mailers and billboards and TV and radio ads so that you will say yes. That is not true. I, I, I talk to parents and I talk to teachers, which are the first two uh, letters for PTA. I talk to uh, students, I talk to people in the community, I talk to my neighbors, I talk to all sorts of folks. I feel that I have a way to be able to talk to people and bring people together that the better that the, that the JCTA actually saw sees in me more so than any of these other candidates. So when I so when I talk to folks, I just like to be able to, you know, bring people together, and I think that JCTA sees that. I've spent the majority of my life in education and supporting education. I've worked very hard to support child-centered, accountable programs. And uh, some of the programs that I've been in, uh, directly involved with, I was involved in starting and setting up the Local Education Employment Partnership Program, which was a business ship, ship partnership program to deal with at-risk kids to make sure that they didn't drop out of school and make sure that they were work ready and college ready. Uh, and we've uh, serviced and helped 20,000 plus kids over the years through that program. I was directly involved with the Everyone Reads program. I helped raise $8 million so that teachers had the supplies and equipment that they needed in the classroom. Um, I helped recruit 10,000 volunteers for the Everyone Reads program so that we and we had accomplished 94 percent of the kids reading at grade level. I want us to see us do the best we possibly can and I would love to see the city of Louisville on top of the world, not just the nation, on top of the world in education. My primary focus is going to be student achievement. We thank our candidates for being here this evening. Please show your appreciation. <laughs> indulgence for the moderator. Have a great night. I think there's some, there are some campaign material for some folks in the back. And refreshments. And refreshments. Have a great night. Thank you. Good job. Chris, that's a low blow, buddy. Chris, I'll see what I can do for you. Hey, I'm not lying. I was in an interview and they asked me. I'm telling them the truth. You can go. I didn't say you did. They asked me that. I believe you'll say yes, buddy. Okay, Chris, I have to ask.
And the sixth number, there are about 10,000 homeless children in Jefferson County Public Schools out of, in round figures, 100,000 students. That's 10%. Think about that. Three kids in an average 30 children uh, classroom does not even have a home to go home to. Viva the 99%.